Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our uh, Professional Development Institute. This is our, we've done several of these now. And this uh, morning, we're very pleased to have with us once again, Ms. Andre Warrington from Emporia State Hello, University. Hello, everyone. Hi, good morning, good morning. Andre is our speaker this morning, and she is a graduate student at Emporia State University. And so she will give you details, any other details about her. Uh, but let's welcome Audrey this morning. Also, as you are, if you will, in the chat box, and Martina, if you can tell everyone to put your name in the chat box, if you put your name in the chat box, that we'll appreciate that. Thank you very much. So let's welcome Ms. Audrey Warrington. Thank you, Audrey. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joyce. Um, so hello, everyone. Thank you for attending my second lecture um, so far in the Fall Institute. Um, like Joyce said, go ahead and stick your names in um, the chat so that we can get your attendance here. Um, so I, I wanted to reintroduce myself because um, I see a few more names and faces that have come in with our consent forms and stuff. Um, and so a little bit about me is I um, am a student at Emporia State University, a clinical psychology student. Um, this is the university that holds all the grants and scholarships that makes this whole study possible. Um, and I am a graduate research assistant, that's also why I'm here. Um, and on the next slide, I have a map where I'll be able to show you like where in the world Emporia even is for you guys. So a little bit of quick facts. I didn't put as many as I did on the first one, um, but still fun and relevant, I promise. Um, so the first one is my mom is actually an educator. Um, it's She is a resource teacher at a middle school in Wichita, Kansas. Um, and so that is honestly one of the only reasons why I know what uh, Connie Joyce and Martina are talking about the majority of the time when they talk about school systems, curriculums, uh, anything about the Renzulli system. It was a little bit of a learning curve for me um, being a psychology student. Um, but I can say that I am now thankful for all the times that my mom made me go to her classroom because um, I know what's going on in the study. Um, I'm from Wichita, Kansas. Uh, we're known as the air capital of the world. Um, Italians, I don't know if that means much for you or if that's really even true, um, but that's what as Wichitans like to call ourselves, um, people from Wichita. Um, while I'm in Wichita, I am a pharmacy technician. So I work at a pharmacy. Um, and if anyone has ever had one job and essentially I have two part-time jobs, uh, you know that working and going to school is a lot and can be stressful. Um, so my, my days are jam packed um, to say the least. Uh, third fun fact about me is through my course load that I have, and um, honestly, this um, research assistantship is I have loved uh, assessment, and I've learned to love it even more. Um, this is like potentially kind of where I want to like take my life, honestly. Um, I like, um, I don't know, just having numbers come to life and have meaning to them, which is a little bit of a nerd thing, I know. Um, but also I talked about this a little bit last week and it, it fed a little bit more into my, um, presentation last week, but I have a love and I know that there is a need for community health, um, and the States and you guys talked about it a little bit more in, uh, uh, Italy and how you would like to see it a little bit more. Um, but also what I didn't talk about that will go a little bit more into this lecture is I've always wanted to be a life coach. Um, and I know the older generation, some of you might have just rolled your eyes, um, but you think that uh, I'm too young, I don't have any life experience. Um, but I don't know, it's always been super cool for me um, to be able to like ask those tough questions to people and have them kind of live, live and experience their own life instead of having other people do that for them. So enough about me though. Um, I promise not to introduce myself next time, um, but I figured it could have been worth it for people who haven't um, been able to actually meet me yet and you just see my name on your emails. 
Um, awesome. So this week is week two. Um, it's about inclusivity. Um, and my presentation is going to be about female leadership, uh, specifically um, the narrative that I'll be telling will be sorority life and the opportunities that it gave me um, as a female leader to eventually have the confidence and experience to be giving you guys a professional development lecture right now. Okay, so what is sorority life? I'm sure the majority of you um, know sorority life through all of the TV series and movies that you've watched or you've just heard about it. Um, so they are women's organizations on university campuses. Uh, the men's version of this, they're called fraternities. Um, I'll only be focusing about females and women today. So <laughs> I just wanted to throw that in for you guys. Um, each organization has their own values and purposes. Um, they kind of go off of the umbrella terms of like community service, sisterhood, and um, academic achievement. So there are 26 different organizations in the NPC, which is National Panhellenic Conference. Um, and that's honestly just a larger name and umbrella term for just all the organizations that are housed inside of this conference. Um, there's also MGC, which stands for Multicultural Greek Council. And there are 10 different organizations in this council. Um, the majority um, of the individuals that join the MGC are um, the people of color community. Um, and their main focus is on like culture and traditions, um, which is a little bit different than the sorority system that I was a part of. Um, so with all that being said, I know that it probably still made zero sense um, to a few people um, because there are 26 different organizations in the conference, um, but just for an example, one of the organizations that I was a part of was Chi Omega. Um, that was my sorority. Um, and so they're one of the 26, but they had 174 chapters inside of that organization. Um, so there are a lot of chapters within the organizations that are kind of nationally known and uh, uh, around the United States. Nope. Forward. Okay, benefits of sorority life. Um, this is one of my senior pictures. Um, but we have uh, academics is a big one that sorority life is known for. Uh, most sororities have a grade point average that you have to have a minimum of in order to be in good standing. Uh, my sorority that I was in, we had to have a 3.5 GPA in order to serve um, on the leadership team and just a 3.0 in general uh, to be in good standing uh, within the chapter. So very high standards. Um, philanthropy, this is a uh, different fundraising and uh, charitable organizations with raising money. And we had different community goals that we would do within uh, Ed Emporia, Kansas. And then we also had uh, national organizations that we would uh, send money to through our fundraising. Um, professional networking, this is kind of where I'm gonna take the lecture a little bit further um, uh, towards the end for this one. But uh, this is where you kind of, you give in so much to sorority and the professional networking is kind of what you get out of being in a sorority. Uh, there are endless amounts of alumni that have graduated from your organization that help you with your career. Uh, when I was in the sorority, we were uh, paired up with different alumni that kind of got you through your major and get, got you connections once you got out. Um, I changed my major halfway through my undergrad, um, changed my focus so those people didn't really mean much uh, <laughs> anymore, um, but I've been able to contact other people for help as well. Um, and if you're on the leadership uh, team in your organization, they send you to different conferences throughout the United States. Um, and this is just to gain more leadership experience uh, that you can use inside and outside of your organization. Um, last benefit that I wanna highlight is community involvement. Um, so 
uh, this is on campus. Most sororities uh, require you to be in a certain amount of clubs and then also hold different sorts of leadership positions within those clubs. Um, and that's also a part of your eligibility to be a part of the organization. Um, so it pushes you to be academically and socially uh, at your highest standards and best um, at all times. <laughs> um, nope, that's all the way at the end. Okay, all right. Oh geez. Okay, just learned that I'm not good at PowerPoint. Go through this again. So sorry. Okay, back at it. Okay, so my experience, um, and then after this, I'll ask for questions. If you guys have any, um, or yeah, if you have anything about sororities, me or anything. So my experience was, um, as I talked about earlier, I was in the sorority Chi Omega. Um, how we explain that to people with the Greek letters. I'm sure you guys all know uh, Greek letters, but it's just an X and a horseshoe, or we call it XL because it's cuter. Um, <laughs> our colors are cardinal and straw or for regular people, red and yellow. Um, so some of the uh, values that um, we had were things like uh, friendship, career and personal development, scholarship, high standards of personnel, um, community service, and campus involvement. Um, so a lot, a lot of things that encompass um, a lot about of a person. Um, the other sororities that I wanted to highlight um, that were on uh, the Emporia State campus were Sigma Sigma Sigma, um, and then Alpha Sigma Alpha. Um, there are yeah, okay. So then in, in my 3.5 years, um, I graduated this semester early. <laughs> um, I held multiple leadership positions inside and outside um, the sorority um, that pushed me to be where I am and who I am at this moment. Um, I'm gonna stop right here before I get any further into this presentation. Um, does anybody have any questions about I guess what I talked about with me or the sorority, are we confused at all? <laughs> are we running through it? Let me look at the chat to see if there's anything. And Martina, do you see any questions that are there? Or do you want to kind of tell us? Scusate, io ogni tanto perdo la connessione. Io ogni tanto perdo la connessione perché sono fuori sede. Se avete delle domande da fare a Audrey, potete pure scrivere. Martina, do you want to tell a little bit about what it's about? Uh, do, you, do you all have fraternities and sororities at your universities in Italy? Uh, ok, mi chiede se anche noi in Italia abbiamo delle associazioni studentesche. Um, uh, okay. Andre, Andre is, uh, is your sorority, is it international? I'm just trying to find out if they have them in Italy. Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that at least in the, the National Panhellenic Conference, it's only in the United States. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. I'm sure, though, that if you guys don't have sororities or fraternities, there's some sort of organization that pushes you to your higher standards like this maybe yeah if it's, if it's not your audrey? own goals what'd you say audrey we yes. we uh, we have a question in the chat i'm um, sorry because sometimes my connection i i lost my connection sometimes so could you repeat please uh what the uh, the meanings of omega sigma alpha Yes, yeah, so the slide we're on right now. Um, so the, the slide I'm talking about now is the, the Chi Omega. It was the sorority that I was a part of and uh, my university experience. Um, so the sororities that I've been talking about before. Um, and 
the Chi Omega Greek letters are uh, X and a horseshoe, which is XO. Um, and then the Sigma, Sigma, Sigma um, and Alpha, Sigma, Alpha were just other sororities that are on campus here with me. Um, so there's just, uh, like I said, 26 other uh, sororities. And these were just two other examples of ones that we have here on our campus that I wasn't involved in, but just examples of them. Okay, I'm gonna move on a little bit, um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, you can put them in the chat um, and we can talk about them and when I stop again. Um, so next thing I wanted to talk about was um, a sense of belonging. Um, a lot of people, I think, just join organizations and have friendships just in general um, for a sense of belonging. So this um, is crucial just for life satisfaction, happiness, mental, physical uh, health. Um, and I, I believe Connie and Joyce said that they went to a lecture recently where this was a big uh, point in their lecture series that they were, um, and it, it is a big a part of all of our lives and just something I guess to acknowledge when we are joining things. Um, why did I join a sorority though? Um, I guess just like any other club and organization. Um, I, um, I played sports my entire life. Um, I was one of the competitive sports where I would travel around. Um, was thinking about playing in college, um, but then ultimately decided not to. And so um, going into college, I, I needed a sense of belonging. I needed uh, a friend group because I've always had some sort of a team and uh, the sport environment, um, extracurricular environment. Um, and so I joined this organization because I knew that they were going to push me through my, my university experience and help me make the most out of it um, inside and outside of the organization. Okay, so a little bit more about my experience. Um, also wanted to note that all the pictures that I'm using today are, I'm in all of them, and they're just this part of my experience that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, so outside of the sorority, um, I was involved in a few things, how I said, or organizations, how I said that they um, encouraged us to be involved in more than just the sorority. Um, so some examples of that was, I was in uh, UAC, which is Unions Activity Council. That is the group here on campus that uh, organizes all events uh, in the university's names, whether that be um, inspirational speakers, concerts, um, people coming in, uh, different organizations that they highlight. Uh, so that was a lot to plan events. So there, it was a lot of fun to put on. Um, the next one was uh, Secretary of Psy Chi. Um, that one is just the honor society for psychology majors. Um, so we just brought in different lectures for that to highlight the psychology experience as well. Um, the last one that I wanna highlight was that I was the president of Green Club. Um, that is, we met twice a week uh, for an hour and we would just go up to different areas around campus and pick up trash. Um, so that's kind of what I did outside of the sorority that they pushed me to uh, expand on. But inside the sorority, um, I was the social media chair. Um, and it's, it pretty much is exactly how it sounds uh, in the title. <laughs> um, I ran the whole like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, um, created the recruitment videos to get people to join. Um, yeah, it, it sounds exactly how, how it is. Um, I was a part of the, the Big Sister program uh, that is you're selected through mutual interests. Um, so like it's a mentor program to mentor uh, your younger sister. Um, and I ended up having two that I was a mentor for um, throughout mine and their college experience. My, my last mentee is graduating in May. 
So I'm super excited for her. Um, the next position was a uh, personnel chair. This is pretty much making sure the entire chapter, um, all a hundred and however many of us um, was held to the higher standard. Uh, this pretty much means that I had to walk around and make sure everyone was following the rules. Um, it's tough when another 20 year old is telling another 20 year old to follow the rules. <laughs> um, but that's what I did. Um, and then the last uh, bigger role that I did was I was the president of Kyle Vega. Um, this, I pretty much just managed everybody. Um, and I joke with uh, Connie, Joyce, and Martina that this is probably why I'm able to manage them so well is because I've managed other 20-somethings. <laughs> um, just kidding, guys. Um, so how did this help me professionally and to develop uh, professionally? Um, for a lot of, especially the ones when I was telling other 20-somethings to follow a rule uh, when I was a 20-something, is that you've got to walk the walk if you're going to talk the talk. So all of the values that I talked about, they had to be um, upheld through my own life, as well as if I expected them from other people. Um, every, every week we would have uh, meetings where I would be um, the one leading meetings for over 100 people um, each week. Uh, again, getting 20 something girls to be quiet for an entire hour and serious in a meeting, not always the easiest thing um, for a year. Um, my presidency also started in January, um, two months before um, the pandemic. <laughs> so it was, it was a lot um, to be managing that many people when I also had no idea what was going on. Um, so then as for the conferences that we were in, um, the conferences that we were able to go to, um, the personnel chair and the president went to each year. Um, so I was lucky enough to be in those, both of those positions two years in a row. Um, the first one that we went to, we flew to Memphis, Tennessee. Um, so that's, a, uh, right around the area that I was talking about, uh, last week. Um, the more affluent area of Tennessee, um, because that is where uh, the Kyle headquarters is. Um, we stayed in the convention center there for a whole week. Um, actually spent my 20th birthday there. That's what this picture is. Um, <laughs> me holding up a two and a zero. Um, and for my president um, uh, adventure, I guess, we flew to Denver, Colorado. Um, that's actually where Joyce and Connie were this last week for a week. Um, and we spent a week there as well. And that's where I spent my 21st birthday. Um, so yeah, it was a month before uh, the, the US was shut down for COVID. So it, I got to experience it. Okay, so again, about conferences, um, this was me and two other of the presidents that I met uh, in that area. Um, again, pre-COVID, that's why we're holding hands. <laughs> um, so what, what was the purpose of it? Um, like any conference um, that you guys have probably ever been to, uh, you know, it's about uh, connections, goals, uh, learning, um, different things to improve your organization uh, and yourself within that. Um, so in that we would create go to lecture where we would create great goals, whether they be professional, social, and interpersonal, um, and that uh, encompassed the amount for you to take within yourself and then also bring back to your chapter to make it the best, of course. Um, and that we gain different connections, we would share information. Um, so one of these girls is from Arizona and the other one is from Denver, Colorado. Um, so it, it was super cool and I still keep in touch with them um, that we were able to uh, make connections like that. They have completely different majors and goals that I have, um, but they were some, a lot of the people that I met um, still are the most uh, empowering women that I have met so far yet um, in my 20 something years. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it was a super cool um, experience. Uh, we attended different lectures. They had uh, professional people come in and 
they would talk about, of course, the sorority and how to make it the, the biggest and the best, but then also um, for you to take these skills and goals out into your own life afterwards. Um, and then, like I said, how I've, I've met so many empowering women during these conferences that I also have found uh, mentors that I still keep in touch with um, that are much older than I am. And it, it's just cool to watch everybody um, and those experiences when you're able to, to see it like that. Um, stop here before I get a little bit even further. Um, I'm gonna look in the chat to see if there's anything. Does anybody have any questions that maybe they didn't put in the chat? I think Martina's asking questions. Okay. Se avete domande, io mi scuso ancora, ma ogni tanto perdo la connessione e sto facendo un po' fatica a seguire. Se avete domande per Audrey sulla sua esperienza eh, in, questa, in, queste, eh, in questa associazione studentesca e, e quello che ha fatto all'interno dell'associazione, ecco, stiamo riflettendo un po' sul ruolo della donna, no? Eh, in termini inclusivi, eh, ecco, e sulla leadership. No, perché lei è stata il presidente della, della sua concezione. I think that we have in Italy too some uh, sorority. Yeah, I, I, I haven't experienced, but I think that we have. Vero, colleghi italiani, abbiamo anche noi le associazioni studentesche, no? Che sono attive sul nostro territorio. Yes. Sì, credo che si... soprattutto come rappresentanza studentesca forse um, we, we have uh, at the university uh, most of uh, the associations uh, like um, student representation in the council of university. Most of them, I think so. And the other are um, something that exists uh, out out the university and in the university, the same, okay. But only university, I think we have, uh, um, yes, uh, representation of students in council of the university. And Francesca, do we, do we have uh, more Mean or woman? Oh, I don't know. I have I had experience in this uh, in at the university, but but uh, just like representing the student. Okay, one year. I think uh, most uh, men, but uh, some yes, most men. I think so. There are women, women, but not uh, very much. <laughs> it depends. It depends. I think it depends what university yeah. contest. Yes, I, I think that uh, depends on like field of university. It's, mm -hmm. it's more education field or engineer or. Yes. Something. OK, thank you, Audrey. And thank yeah. you, Francesca. Yeah, so that's, um, I figured you guys would have had something, uh, an organization that was at least similar. Um, so you would kind of see the correlations of what I'm talking about. Um, but Francesca, get ready for this because I have, this is the best part of when I was researching was um, I found some successful women that were in sororities. Um, and so the first one, Meghan Markle, I've got her down there. Um, I considered putting Harry on the slides as well, but this is a women's only uh, lecture. So, <laughs> um, and then Alicia Keys, the famous singer, Carrie Underwood, the famous singer, um, Ruth Badger. Um, heard, I had never heard of her sorority before, it's Alpha Epsilon Phi. Um, either way, still a famous sorority woman um, who, did a lot of great things in her life. Um, then we have um, Hoda from the Today Show. I don't know if you guys watch the Today Show or not, but it's one Which, of my favorites. Do you know what sorority Hoda is in and also Meghan Markle? 
Yeah, Meghan Markle is in Kappa Gamma. Um, and then Hoda was in Tri Delta. So Delta, Delta, Delta. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Hoda and Jenna is one of my favorite um, segments on the Today Show. So I was excited to see Hoda's name on there. Um, and then uh, we have our vice president, uh, Kamala Harris, and she was in Alpha Kappa Alpha. Um, so I guess here are some successful women, at least in the United States, that um, were in an organization, um, used to be somebody like me, and made their name for it. So um, Delta, Delta Delta, is that a predominantly white sorority? Yes, actually all, all of these that I've listed on here were not multi-Greek, um, multicultural Greek. They were all of the, I guess what you would call traditionally um, uh, sororities for the, the majority of the women are uh, white. Yep, that uh, AKA for Kamala Harris, that's a, that's a predominantly black uh, sorority, AKA. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I, I, I think probably because I haven't heard of Alpha Epsilon Phi, uh, that's probably a multicultural that Ruth was in as well. Um, I didn't, I didn't do too much research on, on going in further of what their sororities were. But but, but know that Tri Delta, Tri Delta is uh, what, which one? It is, it is it? predominantly white. Okay. But I, I thought these, I think these women are already, they're already models and mentors in my own life. And so seeing them on here, it made me happy. So now we're going to get uh, into a little bit of the, the nitty gritty, um, some facts, the statistics about uh, women in the workforce and uh, in our life. And then I'm going to kind of bring it more into inclusion, into what uh, this lecture week is about. Um, so a big statistic for us is 46.9% of women uh, are in the workforce. Um, this, there was, um, it compared it to the 90s and it actually has gone down for how many women are in the workforce. I believe it was, it didn't go down too much, but it, it was around like 54% of women um, in the United States were um, in the workforce and now we're down to 46.9. Didn't give reasons why um, uh, a few articles mentioned the pandemic and everybody just staying home. But I think that there's men that also have been staying home. So I don't know if that's a, a good enough reason. Um, then we have our famous uh, uh, wage gap that we have. Um, and I put some, some numbers on there. Um, the rural jobs, every time a man makes $5.27, it is compared to a woman's 205 or 204, excuse me. Um, and then urban jobs, uh, men's $4.11 is compared to a woman's $3.27. Um, the wage gap has, the gender gap, I think is also what people call it, um, has decreased throughout the years, but it is still prevalent in 2021. Um, I think we can all say it, it irks us, but um, something else that I wanted to highlight though was uh, women contribute to 35% of STEM grads. Um, I know that was really cool. I, I think recently they changed the acronym to STEAM instead of STEM. Um, that's awesome that we're continuing to include inclusion um, and highlight other women and other fields. Um, the women also in minorities in scientific research and development are uh, make up less than a third of the world's research. Um, then this, this graph that I have on here, I was gonna put it into words, but I, I needed to show you guys. Um, to get a better understanding. So every step of the ladder, uh, women of color lose ground to people uh, like white, white women, um, especially white, white men, um, but then also men of color. Um, so you can see here uh, when it talks about different levels of um, hierarchy in a job, um, you can see that uh, women of color and men of color are still um, not getting the opportunities of the white 
uh, women and men. Um, absolutely discouraging. Um, but I just wanted to highlight these statistics to kind of get us ramped up um, before I ask or I ask and make you guys have a discussion with me like I did last week. <laughs> um, I have some more though. Um, and these were kind of shocking um, for me, um, especially when I highlighted so many successful women um, that were in sororities um, a few slides ago. Um, so this, the first uh, statistic and fact that I found was in terms of power and decision-making, women held only 28% of managerial positions globally in 2019. Um, and it is almost, I think just by 1%, um, the same proportion as 1995. So within the last 25 years, um, women are staying at a steady 28% of not having higher uh, power in decision making. Um, in political life, while women's representation in parliament has more than doubled globally, it is still not crossed the barrier of 25% in the parliament seats in 2020. Um, again, can you guys believe that? Um, they, they were big shocks for me because again, of the, the highlighted people that I had with uh, Ruth and Kamala, um, at least in the United States, um, which is discouraging um, that even in 2021, and we're all super excited that this is the first um, woman vice president, especially women of color vice president, um, then it, we're super excited, but it also begs the question of why, you know, can you believe that? Um, why now? Um, so here's another, um, this was part of one of the articles uh, that I read, um, have we done enough for women? And the shared responses agreeing that women's rights have gone far enough in their countries. Um, and we can see all of our countries are represented on here with uh, the blue square of men uh, saying that women have gone far enough in um, creating opportunities and having the same uh, rights, whether it be for wage or position wise. Um, this was just another table of statistics that I thought could boil our blood a little bit for us um, before we get into a discussion or, and talk a little bit more about inclusion. Okay. Um, so then it, it kind of begs the question of how do we encourage our girls to become women? Um, what resources do we hold to help them feel included in the world? Um, this, my examples that I think off just the top of my head are things like uh, the STEM, STEAM classes so they can get involved in, um, recommending different books, lectures, um, activities, uh, I guess in your classrooms as well as extracurricular activities. Um, having uh, powerful women as mentors or you guys yourself being your kids' mentors. Um, the, even the Renzuli learning that we are um, having a part of this study and you guys are getting involved in as another tool that could help our girls become women to be successful. Um, does anybody have anything, any questions or anything? Let me look in the before we dive into this. Avete domande? There was a question of how do they justify this gap in wages? Um, there's not a fair answer. <laughs> of how they justify the gap in wages other than um, they just believe that men hold um, higher standards, I guess. Um, so then they, they give a higher wage to the men. So it's not a good answer and I don't like the answer either, but. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. Well, I think not, some of the uh, employers might see the man as the um, head of the household, as the breadwinner. And I think in some companies that kind of thinking is applied, but not realizing that a large percentage of our households are headed by women. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, single women who are still supporting their own families. Um, but yes, a lot of it, we still live in, uh, we still live in an age where men are the breadwinners and so they are going to let the men continue to be the breadwinners when sometimes it's just not the case in a lot of scenarios. Okay, we're gonna dive into inclusivity. Um, I like this verb more than the noun of inclusive um, or inclusion. Um, I just like the way it sounds, I guess, but uh, the definition that I'm gonna read to you guys is the practice or policy of providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized. This includes um, having physical or mental disabilities or belonging to other minority groups. Um, so same as my lecture from last week, this also would be a pretty good um, topic to talk about. Um, but we've decided to focus on women this week. Um, that being said, I've come up with a few tough um, discussion questions for us. Um, if it's too much to share out loud or if you need time to think, I get it. Um, I'm one of those people as well. Um, I want you to at least take these questions with you to, I guess, apply to your own life. Um, uh, write them down. Uh, think about them with yourself and your future self and how you could take this information from this lecture and uh, bring it into your daily life and uh, classrooms maybe. Um, if you want to share out loud or in the comments, that's also awesome though. Um, I'll read the questions and then Martina can kind of translate for me um, and hear what you guys think. But uh, first question is, uh, what do you guys think has been the biggest challenge to incorporate um, DEI, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion in your life, in your classroom? Anything that comes to mind when that question is read to you? Um, and then the second question that I want us to talk about is what are things you've been doing right now in your life to ensure um, that people in your life, whether it be relationships or the kids in your classrooms, um, that they are feeling empowered and uh, safe in their environment? Okay, allora la prima uh, domanda riguarda appunto la più grande sfida per eh, inserire la diversità, l'equità e l'inclusione, questi principi, questi concetti eh, nella nostra vita, ma anche nella nostra quotidianità come professionisti, come insegnanti. Questo è la prima, il primo input che ci propone Audrey, quindi eh, cosa, eh, cosa pensiamo, insomma, il nostro pensiero, la nostra opinione. E invece eh, la seconda eh, riguarda un po' eh, la pratica, cioè quali sono le cose, cosa stiamo facendo in questo momento della nostra vita per eh, assicurare, insomma, eh, per far sentire sicuri ehm, nelle, nella relazione e nella classe. Quindi se qualcuno vuole così condividere qualche opinione, qualche idea su cosa pensiamo di questi principi e poi come, eh, come, come applichiamo. So like I said, kind of a tough question and I don't expect you guys to, to share that in this lecture if you don't want to. Um, but I think just something to think about uh, when speaking about inclusion and especially our women in our classrooms. Dice, se non volete non c'è nessun problema. Uh, maybe they are a little bit... <laughs> I don't know. Forse siete Martino, un po mi senti? Che siamo a fine giornata. Yes, sì, sì, ti sento. 
Ok, mm, guarda ti chiedo se per favore puoi tradurre. Io penso che a scuola perlomeno non, non c'è questa grande differenza tra maschi e femmine. Il problema si, si pone dopo, mm, cioè quando escono, perché la discrepa- discrepanza grande è proprio nel mondo del lavoro. No? Cioè, a scuola mm, queste difficoltà non, di inclusione tra maschi e femmine perlomeno io non le ho mai notate queste differenze il problema per noi è dopo quindi forse dobbiamo lavorare più nel, nel futuro non so se condividete eh, posso intervenire ok i agree at all what uh, uh, pamela said because uh, here in italy uh, there is not so many differences between uh, male and female in the school. And um, the, uh, the classroom are mixed uh, from the beginning, uh, from the kindergarten. And uh, follow up uh, even the um, university and so. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, the main difficulties for uh, for male um, they, uh, it's uh, the um, uh, maternal role in the society. And uh, I think that uh, not so many uh, uh, women uh, are, um, uh, have a disponibility to give up to the maternal uh, roles. And uh, um, as Pamela said, uh, the, the big challenge is in the, in the uh, work world uh, because uh, uh, it's a, it, it is a challenge every, every time uh, uh, a sort of community makes it uh, between uh, male and female uh, to, um, um, to run for uh, the leadership of course, <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, the priority uh, and, and um, sorry, the, um, uh, the easy solution are for, uh, are for um, uh, male, male people. I, I don't know if I uh, explain better what I, I understand what you were saying, um, and I, I agree. That's, that kind of goes along with um, uh, the wage gap that we talked about. A lot of it kind of uh, promotes towards of the, um, how you said, the maternal uh, factors of uh, they push women to be more part-time jobs so that they can be at home um, and different things like that. So I completely understand what you were saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a question in the chat or something I think we'll build. Um, our students are 11 and through 14 years old. They are debating about SDGs and they are definitely involved in gender equality issues. I think they will build a better future. That's awesome. That's super cool. Okay. Um, so with that being said, that was kind of the end of uh, what I had to, to talk about for my lecture. My upcoming lecture is going to encompass the topic of microaggression um, that we all um, kind of experience and especially in the classroom. Um, that lecture won't be until December the 2nd, so we're skipping this next week because uh, it'll be Thanksgiving break for us as a state. Um, but it'll be at noon Central Time again. I believe that's um, 7 p.m. for you guys. Um, but with that being said, that, that's all that I have for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, I know that you guys all have my email. 
Um, some of you have already been emailing me with different questions. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about my uh, lecture at all, or um, just in general, feel free. All questions are welcome. Well, let's everybody give, um, give Audrey a great round of applause for her lecture today. It's wonderful. You are pro, just like I always say, you got this girl, you're doing a wonderful job. So thanks everybody for joining us. And as Audrey said, be sure to join us again on December 2nd. We want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Thanksgiving is a big thing here in the United States. And so uh, we don't know what kind of celebrations you all do there in Italy. We know that you probably have some Americans in Italy, but just enjoy the weekend coming up. And thank you once again for being here with us today. Grazie a tutti per essere stati presenti e scusate, uh, sorry because my connection was really low here, so sorry, scusate la connessione era un po', andava e veniva e, e ci vediamo sabato, ok? Thank you very much, thank you, Andre. Thank, thank you everybody, bye bye. bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. you, thank you. Audrey, I was thinking that we could use some of your questions that you had as uh, evidence of being present or evidence of having viewed the videos. That is a good idea because I had it in my other lecture as well. Yes, and I'll be sure to do that. I can use that in my class to my students to make sure that they watch. Awesome. Thank you, Cheryl. You're on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye. Thank you again. Bye. Bye, Audrey.